Here's a visual simulation of the binary asteroid system called Didymos and the spacecraft Hera's trajectory, where Hera is in the purple here. And Hera is a main spacecraft for the European Space Agency's Asteroid Impact Deflection Assessment, abbreviated ADA, which itself is a joint mission with NASA's double asteroid redirection test called DART. And it's immediately obvious to see here that trajectory of Hera looks nothing like a typical orbits that you would see around large bodies, like the Earth. And this is due to the fact that the asteroid's gravity fields are so small that complete reversals of the velocity vectors cost centimeters per second of delta V. We can see this in the box at the bottom here that shows Hera's altitude above the main body Didymos and its relative speed, which in this case is roughly 14 to 15 centimeters per second. And this is as compared to Earth, where the relative speed of satellites is on the order of kilometers per second. So here we can take a closer look at Didymos moon, which is called Dimorphos, and this is why it's called the binary asteroid, because Didymos is an asteroid and it has a moon. So there's two bodies in the binary asteroid system, and we can see that its orbit is roughly circular. And from the bottom here, we can see that its semi-major axis, since it's circular, is roughly around 1.179 kilometers, and its relative speed in its orbit around Didymos is around 17 centimeters per second. And at first, it may not be immediately obvious as to what Hera is doing with these trajectories, but if we take another look from the North Pole, we can see that these are actually all hyperbolic arcs. So what Hera is doing is bouncing between hyperbolic flybys, but they're not actually flybys because Hera isn't leaving, but these are hyperbolic arcs. So Hera has escape velocity as it's going along these arcs, but Hera then, when it gets to some point, does a complete reversal of its velocity vector, which in this case is only centimeters per second. So that delta V is extremely small, again, on the scale of centimeters per second. So Hera is able to do all these flybys, dozens of them, with a very small delta V budget on the order of meters per second because of the fact that the asteroid's gravity field is so small. And if you'd like to learn more about how these trajectories are designed and the trade studies that go into designing trajectories around small bodies like an asteroid here, the third episode of the Space Engineering Podcast is with Dr. Francesco Taputo, who specifically goes over the trades of the CubeSat he is working on that is running along with Hera. So Hera is going to drop off two CubeSats. He's doing mission design for one of them. And then in that episode we talk about all the trades that go into which type of orbits and trajectories do we want to have around Didymos that satisfy all the requirements of the instruments and again I'll have a link in the description to that episode and if you're curious to learn more about orbital mechanics around small bodies this is the first video that I ever posted on YouTube before I even made orbital mechanics with Python videos which was a final project for a master's level class on the topic of orbital mechanics around small bodies specifically in this case asteroids or comets where the trajectories them are highly perturbed from the solar radiation pressure due to the fact that the ratio of the solar radiation pressure to the gravity is so large because of the fact that the asteroid's gravity field is so small that the ratio is very much different from something like at Earth where the main force onto the spacecraft is the gravity of the Earth. And again, this video was based heavily on this paper called Orbit Mechanics Around Small Asteroids by DJ Shears. It is a really great paper. He goes into really great detail on all the dynamics that go into modeling these values and then also some limits on semi-major axis and inclination and and again in the podcast that i did with dr francesco taputo we talked a bit about terminator orbits and in this case is the only type of stable orbit that you can have with this solar radiation pressure perturbation if you want to have a closed orbit around a small body so yeah, so that's pretty much it for this video. Again, be sure to check out that podcast to learn more about the trajectory design and the trades that go into designing trajectories around small bodies for spacecraft uh, by listening to that third episode of the Space Engineering Podcast. Again, I'll have all the links in the description. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions or comments on this. And thank you for watching.